Okay, in this session, we're going to talk about NumPy. First of all, why do we need to use NumPy? Uh, there must be some reasons we want to use NumPy instead of naive, naive Python. Uh, the motivation for using NumPy is simply because NumPy is fast, faster than normal Python functionalities. So let's first uh, have a look at this equation. I'm going to give you a simple example. And through this example, I'll demonstrate that NumPy is much faster than normal Python functionality. And this example is a dot product between two vectors. Let's say we are given these two vectors, x and w. And when we try to perform that product between these two vectors, what we do is multiply each component at the corresponding position, and then sum all of these. And how can you imp implement this? First, I'll just use uh, loop to implement this dot product. Let's say this function loop approach receives two vectors, x and w. And what we wanna do is first initialize the resulting value z as zero. And after that, what we're going to do is check each element at each position so here we are iterating through uh, one to n, although Python counts starts from uh, start from zero. And what we are going, what we are doing here, is multiplying the component of x at the position of i, and the component of w at the position of i, and then sum this number, multiplied number, to z. And after we are done doing this, we return z. So this is a loop approach for implementing that product between two vectors. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say A vector consists of one, two, three. And B vector consists of four, five, and six. And let's um, what the result of performing that product between these two vectors, A and B. It results in 32. And this is a very short vectors. These are very short vectors. And what if we use a very large or long vectors for performing uh, that product. And if you use time it functionality, this functionality, you can investigate how much time this function takes to perform its functionality. So here we're going to feed large A and large B, and let's see how much time it takes. Wait for a second. It takes about 130 microseconds. And this was a naive Python implementation. And now let's see what we can do with NumPy. And we need to first import NumPy library. And I'm going to abbreviate this NumPy as MP. And I'll implement another function named MP approach. And this will receive 
two vectors. And there is already that product implemented in NumPy. So I'm going to just use that one. And implementation becomes very simple like this. And some of you who have experiences of NumPy might say, oh, this one is same as mp.x and w. Or this one is also same as x and w. So all these three expressions do the same thing, performing the dot product. And then we need to, I'm going to pass the same element to this function and see if our MP approach and loop approach produce the same result. And as expected, loop approach and MP approach produce the same result, 32. And let's see uh, how much time MP approach would take when we inject larger vectors. And in the case of NumPy, uh, we need to use some different approach to create this long vector. We're going to use MP arrange like this. Uh, don't worry about this, even though it is not familiar to you, if you're not used to these two expression, these, this expression, I'm going to explain this functionality in the later of this video. So let's define these two vectors and let's check how much time it will take to perform that for, for these two large vectors. It takes some time. Uh, it takes only 3.09 microseconds. Much, much faster than this naive implementation. And I guess this faster computation time is enough reason for using NumPy instead of just naive Python. All right. <clears throat> And in the lecture slides, I told you that we are dealing with a lot of matrices or tensors or arrays. They refer to similar things. And how can we define arrays or tensors in NumPy? And I'm going to explain this expression as well in this subsection. Um, there are multiple ways to define arrays. Uh, first, very simple way is we just define a list containing multiple numbers. And after that, we can call mp.array and pass this list containing multiple numbers. And it will create an array like this. You can also create a two-dimensional array like this. And after that, you can just pass this 2D array list to mp.array, then it will create a 2D array like this. And I'm going to visualize this 2D array. It basically looks like this. It has two dimensions. 
meaning it has two axes. And first dimension is in the vertical direction. And the second dimension is on the horizontal direction, like this. Okay, so if you, um, I'm going to explain this in more detail in the later of this session. You can access to some elements using these brackets and you can use like indexes like zero and one to access some elements in this 2D array. And this one, the first one is in the direction of, in the vertical direction. So if you increment this number, it moves in the vertical direction. So zero means these elements and one means these elements because we are moving in the vertical direction. And when we change this value, zero, this one was originally four. However, if we increment this to one, it goes to the right direction, the horizontal direction. Okay, so you need to be careful about the directions of each axis, uh, axis. Okay, that was a little detour. Let's get back to what we were talking, what we were talking about. Um, another thing you need to remember is the data type contained in this uh, list. All right. Uh, when we try to get the data type of each element in this array, you can use dot dtype command. And this will pass what data types in this array, what elements, what data type the elements in this array has, like this. Um, I'll change, um, so if you put that here, the data type becomes float 64, 64-bit. And another thing is, if you just remove these dots from these numbers, and when I do this again, then the data type becomes integer 64. So by default, default, the data type is integer, 64 bit. And if you put dots here at the end of each number, it becomes float. And sometimes you might want to use different data types. Then you can convert the data type this way. Uh, you use uh, here as type command. You can pass the data type you want. Let's here change data type to integer 32. And then print int 32 array like this. And it says data type is integer 32. Uh, when we print it, array 2D here, it didn't print out the data type because uh, integer 64 or float 64 are default data types and default data types are not printed here. However, if data type is different from the default data types, then this NumPy explicitly lets you know that the data type is integer 32 rather than uh, integer 64. You can also uh, change this data type to float as well. So let's say we want to change this data type to float then the data type becomes float 32, okay? And some of you might say, is it really important to think about data types? 
when you use NumPy or PyTorch, TensorFlow, or other um, deep learning frameworks, some frameworks do not allow computation between different data types. So flow 32 array cannot be multiplied with integer 32 array. Sometimes that causes errors. And if you don't know that there are data, data types for each array or tensors, then you might take a, you might need to spend a lot of time debugging your code. Therefore, you need to remember that you need to remember that there are data, data types for each tensor or array or blah, blah, blah. And you need to be careful about this. Okay, another thing I want to mention here is that uh, you can also access to the dimension. Here we specifically explicitly uh, named our variable with the number of dimension here. However, sometimes you just define um, variables without specifying the dimension numbers. So in that case, you can check the number of dimensions using dot ndim command. You can also access to the shape of this array using this shape command. Then it will let you know that it is a two by three array. And it is a tuple. And if our array contains only one dimensional uh, vector or array, then this shape will say it is only uh, three vector. However, if you put another bracket here like this, the shape becomes one by three. So one by three and just three is different. Okay. So that was a brief introduction of arrays in NumPy. And from now on, we're going to talk about um, some other ways to construct arrays. And up to this point, um, it might seem like tedious to create arrays because you need to specify all the elements like this. And when this array becomes multi-dimensional, like five or six, it might be much more tedious to create these arrays. And luckily, Python offers many other ways to construct arrays. Let's see some of them. Um, one of the most frequently used uh, our construction method is MP once, and you pass the shape of this array three by four, and data type like this, and it will um, create a three by four array containing ones. And as you can see here, there is a deprecate deprecation warning. You don't need to use MP int data type, but you can just use default Python data type int, even for NumPy. So the transparency between knife NumPy and knife Python becomes more transparent. And another way of creating some arrays in Python is using this MP zeros. And it will create an array containing only zeros with the size of three by three. 
And sometimes you might say, oh, I don't want just zeros. Uh, I want 99s. Then you can just add 99 here, like this. In the slide, um, I mentioned that this one is technically wrong because 99 is a scalar and this MP zeros is array. And you cannot add arrays with numbers, simple numbers. However, Python, and, no, no, not Python, but NumPy allows this operation. And even PyTorch or TensorFlow also allow this operation. And this is called broadcasting, which will be discussed in more detail in the later of this session. So you can change the values as you want like this. And another famous, uh, another very useful um, operation is MPI. It will create a diagonal matrix containing only ones on its diagonal like this. And if you want to put different numbers to diagonal positions, then you can just pass um, the numbers you want to put at the diagonal and call this diag function. Then it will create an array uh, containing these elements at the diagonal positions like this. These are some ways to create const or construct arrays in NumPy. And what if you want to create just a single dimensional vector? Here, you can use a range. You can put different numbers like four, 10, and if it will contain numbers from four to nine because Python does not include the last element. Or you could simply just pass the number of elements you want to create, like five, and the resulting vector will contain five numbers starting from zero to four. And you can use MP array in a different way, like like this. And this will create numbers starting from one to 11 with the step size of 0 0.1. And this could be useful when you are defining some uh, functions numerically. And there is another uh, functionality you should keep in mind is lin space. Lin space stands for linear space. And you can just pass the number of elements you want to create. And this will create 10 numbers starting from six to 15. So in this MP arrange case, you're specifying the step size. In the case of lin space, you're specifying the number of elements you want to create. And now what we are going to do is we want to access some elements in these arrays. Let's create an array first. Uh, if we want to access to the first element, we can just simply put zero inside this bracket. Because Python counts from zero, the zeroth element is one, first element is two, and the second element is three. And you can also access to multiple elements using this column. So starting from zero to three, it will get you one to, one to three like this. 
and let's create another 2D array. If you pass zero and minus two, because Python allows counting from the back, minus two means uh, the second element from the back. So when we run this expression, it will return two because this first element specifies um, the element in the vertical direction. So it is a zeroth uh, list. And the second one indicates the direction, uh, the ver uh, horizontal direction. So minus two means uh, the second less element, which is the first, the less element, the second less element. So that is two, this. And what will be the result of running this expression? It'll get you six because the less element in each direction. So it's going to be lower right element. So I'm going to show you another picture. So this number specifies the position in the vertical direction. So zero, one, and this one specifies the position in the horizontal direction. So zero. So element one comma zero means four. And sometimes um, you might want to access to multiple elements. In the case, you can access elements in this way. And this one is first column, and this column means everything. So entire first column will be returned like this. So zero means uh, this position, one and four, and entire means this, this elements. So it will return one and four. And if you're not familiar with this operation, it might be confusing. I'll give you another example. Uh, this expression means uh, the first for the first dimension, choose everything. And for the second element, uh, for the second axis, you choose elements from one, two, two. So it's going to be one, two, four, five, like this. So this, um, expression is very useful. Um, if you are familiar with uh, Python lists and Python list indexing, uh, you could get used to this operation quite easily. Okay. So up to this point, we've discussed uh, why we are using NumPy because it's simply fast. And we also had a look at what arrays are in NumPy and how we can construct them in various ways and how we can retrieve some numbers or elements from our arrays. And I would like to give you some exercises to deepen your understanding or check your understanding. Um, let's say You are given this array, and don't worry about this reshape. Uh, this one looks like this. Shape of three by four by four, containing numbers from one to 45.
And our exercise is, uh, what indexing should you use to get this, these numbers? So there are six uh, exercises for you. Please take some time and solve this problem on your own and then move on to the next video.